dealing with the total and complete demonization of Christian schools in this country and the organized bullying of Christians taking place on Twitter and other globalist platforms. We're going to be going uh, to that report here in just a moment. When we come back, Trump is going for the second big summit. We're going to look at that, the dangers, also the positives. Uh, actually, the BBC did a half-decent job coming out with a headline, Are We on the Road to Civilizational Collapse? And they go on to say civilizations don't really die by being murdered. They die by committing suicide. And the globalists are just doing that by design. We'll cover it all, but first, here's John Bowne's report. That's makes America great again. A bunch of child molesting That's right. Dirty-ass crackers behind you right. with a red, with a red... Make America Great Hat Again on a bunch of in incest babies. That's right. A bunch of babies made out of incest. That's right. Here come gang. Here come gang. Here come gang. Nick Sandman, that now famous Covington, Kentucky teen that stood his ground and remained calm in the face of leftist lunacy, has a legal team filing hundreds of lawsuits against the media mob and celebrities that denigrated his family, his school, his fellow classmates, and himself for merely being a supporter of the sitting president and being at the wrong place at the wrong time. The Washington Post faces a $250 million judgment and more are to quickly follow for defamation on a scale that can only be attributed to mental illness or Trump derangement syndrome. You would expect that the mainstream media would be responsible enough to pause, recognize they're dealing with a student, investigate, and make sure that they have the facts accurate that the story that they tell is accurate. But they didn't pause when it came to, to Nicholas uh, because they wanted to rush out and they wanted to jump into the mob, give the mob a megaphone so that they could attack this boy because he was white, he was Catholic, and he was wearing a Make America Great Again cap. If Nicholas had not purchased that souvenir cap that day at the mall, if he was not wearing it, None of us would know who Nicholas Sandman is. The millennial Twitter hordes who recently targeted an Austin, Texas kid for selling hot chocolate to support President Trump's border wall. I was against helping Donald Trump, and then I saw the State of the Union address, and I wanted to help him. He just said, Dad, I want to do a stand to help Trump raise money for the wall. Some people are mad and calling me a little Hitler and stuff, and then some people are really happy. We are obviously conservative, so we have um, certain news stations on, and he hears what we talk about at the dinner table. Somehow it's gotten skewed to think that we're teaching our son to hate, and I don't understand where that comes from. Well, I like all people. But I think it's important that they know what's going on in the world, where we stand, what we believe in. After the local CBS affiliate posted the report to their Twitter feed, the mob piled on, posting a child being thrown off a cliff, another being thrown into a fire, and another posted a wrestler destroying a kid in his living room, a public celebration of child abuse. The moronic millennial horde called for the kid and his parents to be fined for not having a permit, which he didn't need. Also, for his parents to be arrested. All of this on the local CBS affiliate's Twitter page. Twitter. It is Sunday, the 24th of February, 2019. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Infowars.com, Newswars.com are the news sites. But the enemy works around the clock to make sure people aren't able to go and see and hear. But they can't stop you when you take action, so please don't forget that. The first thing I want to just mention is something I'm going to cover at the bottom of the hour in some detail. And that's the BBC does a half decent job pointing this out. But then, of course, their solutions are set up a planetary government and, and, and bring in more tyranny to, to the societal fact that they point out that is accurate. Are we on the road to civilizational collapse? Great civilizations are not murdered. Instead, they take their own lives. And that ties in with biblical locust plague set to hit Egypt. We're going to look at both those articles. And then the good news is Trump, North Korea, berate failed Democrats 
ahead of Vietnam summit. You know, I'll give Trump this. He's bold to try to get denuclearization. He's bold to try to cut China out of the equation that's basically helped keep North Korea as a Stalinist hermit state. And it's a big gamble because the globalists don't want peace uh, over in that area of the world. It's part of a larger global strategic plan to use North Korea as a detonator for a wider global war. But just knowing the instincts of an evil communist regime that's been so incredibly oppressive, I don't see how they will ever let Kim Jong-un even try to denuclearize, even though the U.S. is ready to come in just like Japan at the end of World War II or South Korea and totally re rebuild the thing, and no doubt it'd be an economic juggernaut within a decade. But can you get entrenched, really evil bureaucracies to stop that. Uh, you know, the difference is the U.S. dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the Japanese power structure finally capitulated. And then they can be reorganized. Do you really think North Korea is going to do that? I hope the president's right. I hope he can pull it off. One thing's for sure, he's bold. He's going to be there Wednesday. He leaves tomorrow. We'll have nonstop coverage uh, here on air, ladies and gentlemen. And we do have some big surprises this week. Big, 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 big surprises. About as big as you can get on this show. So look for that. Wednesday is a key date. I will not be in town. I will be on air, though. And so I'll just leave it at that for you. So you want to stay with us throughout the week. The weekday show is 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. You have David Knight and the David Knight Show before me, 8 a.m. every morning to 11 a.m. Of course, you have Owen Schroyer and the War Room. I also have an update on Roger Stone. Roger Stone, since he got completely gagged, uh, where he can't talk about anybody that's even in the case, Mueller, Trump, anybody, uh, has not talked to me. I talked to some of the folks that were in the courtroom. They said, no, it was all about InfoWars. And, and the judge and people were interested in trying to shut you up. So that shows you how the authoritarian cancer has seriously grown in this nation. And how those of us who have been effective at exposing it are under the greatest level of attack. But then there's other stories that are just so illustrative of perception versus reality. And one of those is Russiagate. You've got Jeannie Ray, one of the main prosecutors in the whole Russiagate fiasco, the Inquisition, the, the witch hunt on steroids, the fraud, the, the Red Scare for real. What the left claimed happened to them is now happening to nationalists. But it's not a commie scare, it's a Russia scare. I read, Paul Manafort, a hardened and bold criminal, Mueller prosecutors tell judge. And it's Jeannie Ray with the lapdog media all there. That's Hillary Clinton's chief lawyer from her foundation who was openly involved in all of this massive Uranium One stuff. Do you imagine Roger Stone is going to be in these trials and other people are in these trials and you've got Hillary's flying monkey, Hillary's you know, minion. I mean, she's got this whole army of flying monkeys. She's got David Brock and she's got... Michael Moore, and she's got uh, Mueller, and she's got Jeannie Ray, but I mean, this is Hillary's total servant herself up to her eyeballs in Russia, and then Roger's not supposed to talk about it. And you know, Roger made a big mistake with his lawyers. And I've talked to other lawyers, they agree. He has some factoid thing He's got Coke bottle glasses. The guy's basically like a mole. He's a nice guy. He's a smart guy. He's blind. Can't see in front of his face. Can't read menus. He's got glasses that are, I'm not going to exaggerate, over a quarter of an inch thick. The definition of Coke bottle glasses, okay? He, he literally has to sit there at a menu and just can't even read it, ask you what's on it. So he posts something with her, and it's got, Celtic crosses on it, off with data points out the side. It's not on or any of that. 
oh, I'm so sorry, Your Honor. It's so horrible what I did. His lawyers, it's unconscionable what he did. She goes, I agree. You say one more word about anything, you're going to prison. And everyone then rolls over and pees on themselves. So, Mr. Magoo, that's his code name. That's what his wife calls him. And of course, he likes to act like he's the James Bonzi guy. And he's a smart guy, but no, he's Mr. Magoo. He has to look really carefully when he goes downstairs. I'm trying to be mean here. It's true. But I'm sure when I'm 60 something, my eyes are, my eyes have 2015 vision. Not even 2020 now. I have trouble in a dark restaurant reading a menu. So, my point is, is that. Notice, none of the media but the New York Times showed you what he did, and that was cropped with the judge and then a little Celtic cross up here in the corner with some little, you know, lines of data out to the side. Now scroll down show, folks. So, so that's what's going on, and, and enough about Roger. It's just, it's just the climate in this country, and then to talk to some of the reporters that were there, and then they call me the next day, and they go, sorry, I, I can't even talk to you now. They're saying it's anybody in Roger's orbit can't ever talk. You know, that's not in the order. Uh, and uh, they're talking about gagging you. Well, of course they are. My God. But one thing that's going to happen is I'm not going to kiss that corrupt judge's ass, that dirty, filthy criminal. I'll get up in front of her and tell her she's a filthy criminal. Judges that have a good record, I'll respect them. I respect our judicial system, the Bill of Rights Constitution. The three branches of government. I want America back. But she covered up Benghazi. She covers up with all this corruption, illegal spying, and all this crap. She's an un-American threat to this country. She's a judicial tyrant, just like the Nazi judges. I'll never kiss her ass, ever. I'm not involved in Russians. You are. With Jeannie Ray and Hillary, you're covering up the real threat. You're the threat to America. So get that in your damn pipe and smoke it. All of you. These damn people are on TV saying we're going to kill your babies after they're born. And I got stacks of news where they're going to teach five-year-olds now. They're another sex in mainline schools. They're coming for everything. Now there's so many of these, four or five a day, a couple a day that become national news that I can't even watch them all to keep track. And you'll, somebody will be in a restaurant, somebody will be at a college, somebody will be walking down the street, and somebody just walks over super arrogant and punches you right in the face or dumps hot coffee on your head. It, it's happened to me just for being Alex Jones. And the thing is, then they'll go brag to cops. They always get arrested now because they're like, yeah, I did it. He deserves it. It's like some of those women that came out and admitted that they just lied, never met Kavanaugh, never raped him. They go, but he's Kavanaugh. I mean, he's a bad guy. I mean, he is a rapist. Balazi said it, so I wanted to support him. Well, no, Balazi's story was fake as well. Balazi Ford. Little Miss CIA Sunshine. You notice she's disappeared off the radar, all these failed attempts at hoaxing. Just like Horseface. Oh, <laughs> A horse is a horse, of course, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mrs. Stormy Daniels. You don't hear about her, Avenatti. Oh, Avenatti said he got Michael Cohen's IRS records from a random uh, private person. No, you, you can't get those. He got them from an IRS agent. They raided the guy, of course, a few days ago, and turns out he is a vicious anti-Trumper, of course. That's who we've got to a certain extent in the federal government in those key areas, the IRS, where Lois Lerner taught us that you, you persecute Christians, you persecute conservatives, you don't just punch them in the face because they dare exercise their free speech. No, 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 no. You teach their five-year-old sons how to be girls and their five-year-old daughters how to be boys. You teach them how to get on Prozac and Ritalin and you teach them how America was never great and how it'll never be great. And then that's what you do. So I've got all these clips I want to get to, but let's just go ahead and start with AOC, Ms. Cortez. Before I get to these new clips, I thought I'd play some of the previous clips, just the last, you know, Dianne Feinstein also, that's coming up. AOC claims the world will end in 12 years unless we act to prevent climate change. How is that not terrorizing people? 
How is that not terrorizing young people? And, and how many pizza places have you been in? Or how many school plays have you gone to? How many times have you been around children's artwork? And it shows a penguin and a polar bear. This is what they tell them to do in class. And they tell them in the class, worldwide, UNESCO curriculum, show penguins and polar bears that are going to drown because the ice caps are melting. Well, the ice caps every year in the Arctic and Antarctic summers get smaller, and they get bigger in the Arctic and Antarctic winters that are reversed. But they show you penguins and say they can't swim. They're one of the best swimming birds on the planet. Polar bears can swim 300 miles. They hunt on ice packs out to 300 miles and swim back, hunting beluga whale. But see, it doesn't matter. They show kids, look at the polar bear. T type in polar bears, global warming. Just click Google Images. Yeah, it's, it's the same, there you go. It's always the image of a polar bear on a piece of ice, and you think, oh, it's not aquatic. It can't swim. Oh, my God, no. It's hiding up there to kill whales. It's so strong, type in polar bear killing beluga, that it can haul in, what, a 1,500-pound beluga with one arm. Boy, that's a tough animal. One arm fishes up an entire whale and eats it. Yes, they can swim in sub-zero water. A lot of idiots will go, well, why is it sub-zero? Be ice. No, salt water doesn't freeze as easy as fresh water. I'm, not, I'm digressing. The point is, is that how many times you've seen the photo of a penguin on top of an ice floe, and they say, save the penguins, they're about to drown. It's a freaking aquatic bird. It hobbles around on the ground. It shoots like a torpedo through the water. Well, I think some penguins can go like 50 miles an hour. Look up maximum speed of penguins, please. But but listen, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. I, I saw a report on this years ago. We could pull it up. They'd leave my YouTube channel. I was in Port Aransas, Texas at the pizza place there. And they had over 50 elementary school students. Well, that, that's on land, 5.6. It's, it's how fast does the penguin swim? How fast can the fastest penguin swim? Penguins are aquatic. They sleep on land. They live in the water. It's aquatic bird. It's, it's in the water. Sorry. I'm digressing. They swim like this. 22 miles an hour. I saw something at top speeds of 15, but whatever. 22 miles an hour. So continuing there. See, my memory failed. That's not 3.5 miles an hour. I, you know, I'm already digressing here. This is, this is Does this even matter? The point is, is that they show you penguins and say they're all going to die, and Al Gore does PowerPoint showing polar bears saying, oh, oh, but it gets better. They want it outlawed if you deny man-made global warming. Well, everybody knows that things get hot, things get cold. The only constant is change. So they change it to climate change. Now, we're not denying climate changes. We're saying that anthropogenic or man-made is a very, very tiny amount, and real science shows that. But the left's always, oh, we control science, you don't, and, and you're making things up. And you're the ones that say that there are only, uh, you know, 100 genders, and there are no men, there are no women, and a man can, uh, with genitals, male genitals, can be a woman. No, you're the ones that are against science, okay? So coming up, we have this video of them brainwashing a bunch of little kids before they go in to try to push Dianne Feinstein to give us more carbon taxes and shut down, of course, only our economy. But as we go out to break, though, I thought we'd first just you know, play some of her oldies but her goodies, where AOC says that we'll be all dead in 12 years. Not from nuclear war, that's a possibility. Not from bioweapons, that's a possibility. Not from an asteroid. But she says from global climate change. Here she is. And I think that the part of it that is generational is that millennials and people and, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is... Your, your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. And, like, this is the war. This is our World War II. Well, they've inflated the Venezuelan currency massively. They just can't imagine.
that by 2013, all the coastal cities of the world will be completely flooded. They probably bought a house right on the beach in California. But at least he just said all the cities would be flooded. And 10, 11 years later, of course, it didn't happen. But now, AOC, so we always got to say her whole name, like she's royalty. Imagine if I'm Alexander Emmerich Jones. Well, you know, Alexander Emmerich Jones says, well, you know, Alexander Emmerich Jones, or other people's full names, like, well, Patrick J. Riley says, So she's the perfect anglerfish light. Alexandria Lordship Cortez is not really a person. She's one of those deep sea fish that lures in other phosphorescent luminous fish with that light that looks like it's a juicy luminous shrimp. But really it's, it's hiding the floating swimming mouth the self-propelled stomach that's about to eat you. And so AOC is the, uh, and you're like, that's an ugly light. No, it's a meth mouth, small brain light. But you have to understand, she's like, everyone gets free everything and reparations, all the black people. doesn't matter if almost all the white people in the U.S. had ancestors that didn't have slaves and most white people came here, you know, after slavery. It doesn't matter. All of you have to pay. You're like, if your dad committed an armed robbery, like 50 years later, you go to jail. But, but she's out there. Oh, oh, and of course, Elizabeth Warren doubled down. She made up being Native American. She goes, well, let me kiss their butt because they're all after me. You know, the major tribal groups say I'm a fraud. Let me say, oh, the Native Americans, you all deserve some reparations too. Well, they already get money on the reservations and it's ruined most of their lives. But it's a side issue. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really I'm digressing here. I got so much news to hit. Uh, but AOC, Alexandria Methhead Cortez. I mean, I'm not saying she's a Methhead. I'm just saying if I was going to cast somebody for a new season of Breaking Bad that's like a crack whore Methhead, she'd be it. Like, I'm not saying Brian Stelter looks like someone that eats children. Well, I'm not saying he does eat children. I'm saying he does look like he's the type of creature, like they could cast him for the next It the Clown. There'd be no makeup needed. Like if I was walking down a dark alley at night and he turned a flashlight on under his face, I would projectile defecate in my pants. And I'm, I'm sorry to be gross here. I would actually, there's a few things that horrify me, but the, when you have discernment, Brian Stelter is the true face of demonic evil. Oh my God, he's so, so evil. So sorry, sorry, I'm not digressing. I'm not saying he's a child molester. I'm saying he looks like a child molester. Who could deny he looks like a big fat creeper van driver? But let's go further. AOC looks like a crack whore. But what we do know about the woman that looks like a crack whore is that she's evil, she's a liar, and she's stupid, and she's arrogant, and she's bad. Now, let's expand on it. And meth's a bad thing. She's got meth mouth. Her muscles are desiccated. But it's a hard job working for the anglerfish. Chucky Schumer. That's what she is. She's, a, she's an anglerfish for Chucky who sits back. He's like, yeah, yes, I'm Chucky Schumer. I'm sorry. Let me get serious. Let's go these clips. Um, so... She now taunts Green New Deal critics, saying, I'm the boss, how about that? Now, if she wasn't such an idiot and such a moron and, and, and it had more successes in her life, except being given everything, including the designer outfit she wears, that might actually work. But she's like somebody wearing the biggest cowboy hat you ever saw who's never seen a horse or a cow. But this is who they are. This is who they bring you. Up there promising, we don't need budgets. We don't need money. Everything's free. 
but she never crit. In fact, she's mad Trump's been criticizing Venezuela. She thinks it's great, like Bernie Sanders. I mean, if you saw Cortez at a 7-Eleven on a Friday night, well, you're, you know, your buddies are like, hey, let's get another 12-pack of beer, you know, watch this movie. You go to 7-Eleven, you walk in, you go, oh, my God, look at that meth, meth head prostitute. I mean, I'm not being mean. It's just true. She looks like a meth head prostitute. But what she is is a tyrant. So let's go ahead and let's play this clip of her saying, I'm the boss. Here it is. It was like, you know, it's your worst fear. It's especially when you feel like imposter syndrome. It was your worst fear, feeling like like someone was going to find you out as like a fraud. And I read it and I was like, you know what? I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. Because, again, I'm at least trying and they're not. That's right. So the power is in the person who's trying, regardless of the success. If you're trying, you've got all the power. You're driving the agenda. You're doing all this stuff. Like, I just introduced Green New Deal two weeks ago, and it's creating all of this conversation. Why? Because no one else has even tried. Because no one else has even tried. So people are like, oh, it's unrealistic. Oh, it's vague. Oh, it doesn't address this little minute thing. And I'm like, you try. <laughs> you do it because right. you're not because you're not so until you do it i'm the boss That's how right. about that you heard it here we the bosses That's we the right. bosses so so think about this spain tried some of these initiatives it bankrupt their whole country she wants to ban air travel she wants to, she says if you can't work or don't want to work and it just gets crazier and weirder from there no lady we know what works, we know what doesn't work. And we know where you're steering us is total and complete, absolute disaster. And that's why you're so dangerous. And then you lied and said that what was on your website wasn't on your website and said we made it up and later you had to admit, no, that's what you put up there. So you're just a liar to boot who thinks you control reality. And, and you know what? People aren't in power that just try. If you try to jump off a cliff, you might kill yourself. If you try to be a meth head like her, you're going to have a terrible life. Or what looks like a meth head. You have to be a real pioneer going in the right direction to empower yourself. You're like, well, I'm going to try to just eat 100 Twinkies a day. You're going to weigh 500 pounds in a couple of years. So just because you try, I'm trying to eat all these Twinkies, doesn't mean you're doing something good. Oh, we, we tried with communism. We tried, we tried. You're an idiot. The big mega banks, the establishment, they want all of the power control. They want domesticated morons. And you're the prototype of the type of person they're going to put in charge so the lemmings can sit there and believe they're going to get a bunch of free stuff from you. But none of it's free. It all comes with major strings attached. She's joined Cory Booker. I have this clip, but I don't have time because I got a bunch of the news I want to hit. She's now said, eat fewer hamburgers. Well, that's nicer than Cory Booker. He just said, hey, we're coming for your meat. You're not going to have it soon. Uh, he is now the lead counsel at InfoWars, and we're about to launch a bunch of offensives against the globalists. Just give them a heads up on that. Uh, so it's very important, listeners, understand, when you get your high-quality toothpaste at InfoWarsStore.com, when you get your high quality protein bars at InfoWarsStore.com, when you get your high quality Wake Up America coffee at InfoWarsStore.com, it's the best fluoride free, colloidal silver, iodine, fortified toothpaste. It's what I think is some of the best high quality coffee out there. People love it. Uh, it's amazing high quality bars of the highest quality ingredients that are four, five, six, seven dollars for comparable bars at Whole Foods. These are top of the line for $3 regular price. 240 in a single pack, even lower when you get two boxes together. This has just been out a week or so, already 13 reviews, 100% satisfaction, 4.9 stars at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank the listeners for all their support and what you do, but people in the office are like, a few months ago before the main shipment came in, you know, obviously made in America, they're like, this is the best bar I ever had. And I said, yeah, we went out and went to the top um, uh, developers, top producers, and said, 
yeah, what's top of the line and how much does it really cost? And they're like, $1.50 a bar. We shopped around, go, that's accurate. And I said, well, what's the average group sell it for? About $6. We're going to sell them for three. There you go. That's my philosophy. The 150% markup. And then we always discount. People like that. They just, just want to see there's a discount, even though the product's already discounted. And then we make 100% on it. And all you got to do is sign up at InfoWarsStore.com and just get your protein bars from us. Get your coffee. Look, look, they always do this with the Vice and HBO and Showtime hit pieces and others where they go, we tested Jones products for seven days to see what it did to us. And they always pick something they say is okay to get your confidence. But so you think they're reasonable before they tell you all the lies. But the latest one, the guy's like, my God, this is some of the best coffee I ever had. And wow, the storable foods, this is really good. But then he goes into... Yeah, why would you drink your water through a life straw? That's an emergency top selling at any REI place or anywhere. That's an in the field straw for camping. Oh, he's a con man. Why, he sells something that sold at Academy and sold at REI and sold at any camping or survival store. Well, I can go down to the Army Navy store and buy that right now. They're good people, though. But I can buy it at InfoWarsStore.com for about 25% less. That Jones is a real piece of crap. Oh, it is protein powder. I mixed it with water. It doesn't taste very good because you're supposed to mix it with other protein or strawberries or whatever because it's pure chaga mushroom, bee pollen, and the highest quality concentrated chicken broth, dumbass. And it's awesome. Leading competitors aren't as strong under 50, 60 bucks. We normally sell it for $39.95, discounted at $29.95. It's $19.95 right now. Look, I'm digressing. Infowarsstore.com. You get great products and you fund us. And I've got dead to rights documents on who's behind the lawsuits. I've got dead to rights documents on secret rating agencies. When this all breaks, international news, okay? I mean, it's it's... So criminal, so brazen, so naked. It's all coming out soon. But we're in a war, and it takes money to prosecute a war. So InfoWars offensive operations are about to commence. We didn't start the war. We'll finish the war. We're going to devastate secret organizations. We're going to devastate their criminal activities. And, and, and by the way, you can't stop me. It's all coming out, even if something happens to me. You people think that everyone's dumb like the people you prey on. And most of them aren't even dumb. They're just just foolish and not conscious. We're, we, we know how to study things. And we're going to come after you, so get ready, you, you filthy, dirty criminals. And by the way, both parties are involved at the top. The political power structure is so scared right now. You'll never put yellow vest back in the bottle. You'll never put the 1776 back. It's, you're done. And if you want to try to tear me apart as some type of thing to threaten the public, you don't know the public you're dealing with. Yes, cowards like you, that works. Tear, you think killing everybody at the Alamo made the Texans all piss on themselves and give up? It sent them into a psychotic rage of victory. You don't seem to get it. Because, see, people like me and, and the Patriot listeners to this broadcast and our veterans, we found and build the country. We do the work. We do the bleeding. And then you white shoe boys come in, and you move in later and take it all over and tell us how great and cool you are and then think we're a bunch of cowards like you. That's not how it works. And you're going to find out. So have your fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So, I haven't gotten to this yet, and I got uh, Robert Barnes coming in the studio. Smart guy. We're covering the whole waterfront here on a bunch of big issues. Big interview with him up on Infowars.com that folks are loving. We did last night. It's like an hour long. Very powerful on a whole bunch of big issues. But we're going to we're gonna get into, uh, we'll just put it to you this way, a lot of things you're going to want to hear about in the next hour. Now, I haven't gotten to Bill Maher yet. And some people don't get it. They say, well, you say Bill Maher declared war on the Midwest. What he did was point out there is a war on the Midwest and the South by the left because the Christian ethos and because we don't want to be in Hollywood and all the rest of it. So he says, you know, Amazon, you should build 
in the Midwest so he can teach kids how to be gay. He actually says that. So he, he gets into his whole, his whole religion with everybody and how we want to be him and how beautiful the left is. And we're going to make a little mini documentary this week. We're going to do it. Where, where he talks for six minutes and we put the needles and the feces and the statistics and the giant exodus out of California and out of Oregon and out of Washington State and out of the East Coast and out of all these places they run. And we're just going to show him talking with all the statistics and numbers while he talks. But he says, oh, you poor, pathetic, stupid, redneck scum in the Midwest and in the South. We're going to teach you. You want to be us. Well, don't worry. Amazon, come to them with your slave wages and your third world workers. That's what they want. So they want to be in New York or Seattle. And we'll, we'll finally let you into the club and teach your kids how to give blowjobs. I mean, he literally says all this. So it's like he's so disconnected. Like, oh, they really want Hillary. Yes. Yes, that's they really want Bill Clinton. Yes. Let's 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 give them that immediately. It's what they really want. Let's let's give them AOC. Yep, gay and trans sex ed to be taught to five year olds in the UK. Opting out is illegal. And it's already begun here in the US. Oh, it's illegal. The state's gonna tell your son or daughter they're a different sex and screw them up for life. And then if they decide because they're have no age of consent now, basically, that they want to be put on a hormones or whatever at age seven, we're going to do it. We're going to come screw your kid up and talk about chopping their huevos off. How's that sound? So are we on the road to civilizational collapse? We'll talk about this next hour. I'm a little bit behind today. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not just seeing civilizational collapse. We're seeing globalist, Malthusian, directed, hyper-exterminist eugenics in a neo-feudalistic fascism being implemented to create a breakaway civilization. As this civilization collapses, we will be used as fuel, both literal and figurative, for the breakaway civilization of the psychotic globalist. And that's even the London Guardian today. I know I told you about it 20 years ago. I was reading the more esoteric writings of the establishment. But now, in Silicon Valley's quest for immortality, a fate worse than death. Is Silicon Valley's quest for immortality of fate worse than death, it is spiritual death. And it's the final con that, oh, you don't die, you'll be uploaded into this AI system that's been tracking you from birth, knows your voice print, your mannerisms, how you talk, what you say, but it won't be you, but it'll fool everyone that you've been uploaded into it. Didn't bring Robert Barnes in here with a whole bunch of breaking news on the other side of this break, but I wanted to go to this special report because, you know, all the smart tech is designed to spy on you and report back to the mothership. All the AI, all Google, all of this is about that. And so now Google's like, well, of course we spy on you, dummy. Of course there's a microphone. Ha ah, ha, what? I mean, you think Alex Jones is wrong? Ha ah, ha, here we go. Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, one of many anti-American Silicon Valley cohorts subverting our republic, recently spun this deception during a hearing on Capitol Hill. Google has long faced criticism for manipulating search results to censor conservatives. Conservative individuals and organizations have had their pro-Trump content tagged as hate speech or had their content reduced in search results. And enforcement of immigration laws has been tagged as hate speech as well. Such actions pose a grave threat to our democratic form of government. Dr. Robert Epstein, a Harvard-trained psychologist, authored a study recently that showed Google's bias likely swung 2.6 million votes to Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election. Google could well elect the next president with dire implications for our democracy. When we look at it, we evaluate our studies to uh, evaluate our search results. Today, we use a very robust methodology, and we have been doing this for 20 years. Uh, making sure the results are accurate is what we need to do well, and we work hard to do that. Uh, what does methodology have to do with the fact that 96% of the references to Trump are from liberal media? 
An independent study by search engine DuckDuckGo revealed that Google has the wherewithal to socially engineer political bias bubbles via its search engine. As the Business Insider reported, the study, among other things, found that participants saw vast differences in search results when searching for the same keywords like gun control or immigration from different locations across the country. A representative for DuckDuckGo said that what our study does reveal, or at least suggests is that Google's collection and use of personal data, including location, which is then used to filter specific search results, is having an effect akin to the effects of a political bias. That stranglehold on information could have far-reaching effects as the 2020 presidential election draws near. And as a reminder, it's no secret that back in the 1990s, a CIA NSA program partly funded Sergey Brin to develop Google via a grant through Stanford University. A couple of decades later, the Department of Defense's deep state monstrosity Google is overseeing a U.S. population addicted to its search engine and its surveillance technology, invading every inch of our private space, a way of creating a digital fence around the sheep to ensure their individuality doesn't allow them to stray from the flock. That's crazy. Like, are you able to see where I live and everything? Inadvertently responding to this revelation by white hat hackers concerning the microphones and their Nest cameras, Google responded as Business Insider reported. In early February, Google announced that its home security and alarm system Nest Secure would be getting an update. Users would now be able to use Google Assistant on their devices. The problem, users didn't know a microphone even existed on their Nest Secure devices to begin with. The existence of the microphone was never disclosed in any of the product material. A Google spokesperson told Business Insider it had made an error and that the on-device microphone was never intended to be a secret and should have been listed in the tech specs. What a complete crock of shit. Face it, we are currently ruled over by a lawless Silicon Valley apparatus supported by a Department of Defense circumventing our God-given rights on our own tax-paying dime. Socialist candidates linger on the horizon all right, phone report, Infowars.com, John Bound, out of the park as usual, trials. They tried to put him in prison uh, for simply teaching people that the IRS violates a lot of your rights, that the income tax uh, has more holes in it than Swiss cheese, Joe Bannister. Uh, but you've also represented some of the Covington kids. Uh, you've been involved in so many big, famous cases, Ralph Nader and, 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 and ballot access. So, But you're not the type of guy they like to put on the news because successful lawyers they don't generally put on Unless it's an Alan Dershowitz, he's kind of a exception. The ones they put on are the ones that keep losing to the system because they want folks to get those lawyers. But you've been very, very successful. Exactly. I mean, the, the way the system is designed to be, they're not going to promote people who are very good at hurting the system. They're going to promote people who help the system. So they're going to promote libel lawyers, for example. Fill your phone, please. That, that are really, that are really bad at it. Um, oh, nice music, though. Yeah, it does have nice music. The. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's about the best thing about it. But they're going to promote people that deliberately help the system, that help the system get away with responsibility, that help the system escape liability, that are going to help the system promote itself. So they love libel lawyers who lose all the time, just like the government loves criminal defense lawyers who lose all the time. So you look at, I mean, you know, one of the issues with Roger's case is the first thing that happens is the criminal defense lawyers are going in. Well, let's talk about that because we're going to, I'm going to spend all day on courts, but this judge, what she's doing, uh, the whole situation with Manafort, Roger being gagged, uh, now the latest on the Covington kids, because you don't want to say any mean things about who some of the kids are being represented by, but the truth is they've never won one of these libel cases. And even Dershowitz said, my God, I'll never say this, but you need to fire your lawyer. You were privately telling me that two weeks ago when you were here in town, and then you don't want to say it on air, but now Alan Dershowitz has said it. Yeah, he has. And, and what Professor Dershowitz's point was, and you, you rarely see him comment about anybody else's relationship with a lawyer, and what he said on the air on Fox News, on a conservative site, was that the way in which the suit, certain suits are being brought are going to jeopardize the ability to win those suits, are going to allow the media to get away with it. And, like, the reason why we're being very careful, so I'm, I'm bombarded with questions about people are asking, what are you going to do on Covington? How are you going to do it on Covington? The reason why we're very careful, we roadmap everything out, is we want to make sure we win. Because it does no good to sue the media and sue the institutional press and sue the establishment base uh, and the establishment press and let the establishment press win. Because then people are going to think 
that that's in fact what was true, what was said about the Covington kids. So it's critical that any suit that's brought is, has a high chance of winning, has a high chance of prevailing, not only to establish the truth to protect these kids, but also at the same time to establish rights that will protect everybody else moving forward. So why is he suing in the wrong court? Why is he putting a big number up front? Why is he letting them know it's a huge fight? I mean, PR does nothing if it's empty. Correct, exactly. It's uh, There's an old football statement. An old football agent used to say, you can hire one of two kind of coaches. The coach is going to win you the press conference or the coach is going to actually win you games. And often the coach who wins you press conference doesn't win you games. And that's precisely what this was. So when you, what Professor Dershowitz was criticizing is this is a lawsuit that the way it's being brought, how it's being framed, how it's being phrased, where it's being brought is an invitation to failure because it redefines the issues in favor of the institutional press, helps the institutional press escape responsibility, and in the process damage the potential for real remedy for the Covington kids. That's right. Now let's, I don't want to get into my situation other than the fact that I'm not just with you, but other top law firms, Republican Party, Democratic Party, we have confirmed, uh, and of course we saw last Tuesday, Clarence Thomas came out and said, time to get rid of New York Times versus Sullivan, basically get rid of the most stringent protections for journalists. And they're using InfoWars like I'm a big bloody piece of meat. They want to poison pit bulls. And so there's a big bloody piece of meat. They're sticking a cyanide pill in it so that people will then tear down the anti-slap laws that have been passed that I think overall are good, that protect journalism from frivolous stuff, and then create bad law, period, overall. And that's now admitted, and they've got the, the major press cheerleading their own literal destruction. So you laid this out great last night, so just briefly go through... The, the demonization, the preparation, the straw man, and then how it collapses into the next level, and then what the end game is, because now major uh, legal guilds, journalistic groups, I'm not allowed to get into it, you know the names, they're now contacting us and others and saying, okay, you're right. We understand it's a setup. This will actually end the First Amendment. It'll actually end Sullivan, uh, you know, New York Times versus Sullivan. But they're like, but we hate you so much. Well, that's the straw man that got built. So to watch the left being manipulated by very cold, dark uh, corporate powers is sick. Absolutely. The way I analogize it is years ago I explained to people that were uh, using trust in the tax arena. They're like, how is it all, all, all of a sudden started getting targeted by the IRS? They're like, how is this happening? Wealthy, powerful people have been using trust forever without a problem. It's because ordinary people started using it. So the anti-slap laws, which origi originally were designed to protect little people, became sort of a monopoly of big media, but then it became started in increasingly to be a powerful pool uh, tool for ordinary people to be in a position where they could defend themselves and vindicate their rights. And as soon as that started happening, you started having institutional pressure to use your case and other cases to try to get rid of the anti-slap protections for the little guy because they thought they should have only been protections for the big guy. So as soon as they were being applied to the ordinary person, the everyday person, the independent press, the anti-establishment press, the outside the establishment press, then all of a sudden it was, well, maybe we need to change these laws. Maybe we need to take them away. Maybe now they're too dangerous. And last night, you you laid it all out. You were here two weeks ago and laid it out. But then this week, it's been admitted in the press. I mean, it, it's everywhere. They're kind of going, ooh, wait, this is a larger plan with both the Republican and Democratic Party behind the scenes actually supporting it because they're threatened by independent information. And you've got dying newspapers that think, oh, we'll join in on censorship to make ourselves relevant. No, that's just their last act. They'll fully discredit them before big tech totally shuts them down. But, but lay out how they started with with me, the straw man, and then uh, leverage it up. Precisely. So the first thing to do was to use Hollywood with Showtime and the Homeland show to create a caricature of you that was a completely inaccurate and totally ridiculous version of you, but to make that the definition that people had of you, to think that character was Alex Jones. So that's step one. Then the lawyers who watch that show borrow from that show's definition of you to create a lawsuit based on the lie that that show it was. It looks like a Homeland script. Completely. And they're going to just sell to everybody that's us. Correct. Exactly. A total fiction, a total fabrication. You dig into the lawsuit, the lawsuit doesn't make the allegations that a lot of people thinks that it makes. They think there's allegations that you are personally harassing people. Totally false. It's not even in the lawsuit. What the lawsuit alleges is a Most of the people were never even named. Exactly. Not even named. Uh, people were afforded an opportunity to give their side of the story. That was it. So what we have is the institutional press combining with big tech to, in this case, combine with the entertainment industry to spread a lie, then to use lawfare to, to make that lie go wider, then 
then they use the existence of the lawsuit as a grounds to deplatform you. Then they use the deplatforming you as a grounds to demand a bunch of invasive discovery. Uh, and, and it's all one step to the next to try to blacklist and black and to, to completely blackmail and bankrupt anybody from ever attempting to do what you did, to scare them, to intimidate them, to extort them into saying, I can't be a dissident voice. And that's all about shutting up the audience's right to choose. The audience's right to choose what news they read, what views they desi decide. It's the audience that determines whether something is true or not. And they admit uh, anyway. that, and now they're just going to move in with these rating agencies run by these horrible neocon groups and leftist groups who are now starting actually this month on the Microsoft platform, supposed to be everywhere next year with this n n a news guard. They're on your phone in live time what you're watching and doing and giving you messages. Exactly. What used to be technology meant for surveillance for the state is becoming technology used by big tech itself to be outside of the re restrictions and limitations of the state because they're not governed by the Constitution in the same way. And let's but be clear. People think, oh, Alex told us that, you know, Nest things were watching and listening to us a few years ago when they came out or you know, all this. Because it was in the documents. It was in the, it was in the admissions. It was in the terms of service. Well, well, now they're announcing, oh, on your phone or your computer, Third-party Southern Poverty Law Center people are literally going to be watching in live time what you do, flashing messages up, not on the website, on your phone. Thank Forget you. presidential alerts on your phone. You're yeah. going to have literally people minding you like the Stasi, but the Stasi didn't tell you you were being watched. Right. They tell you you're being watched. Exactly, because the best way to get people to censor themselves is to be scared of being watched and surveilled. All and think time. about how that's beyond 1984 by light years. They Robert Mueller and pedophile range which the Washington Post says don't exist, even though it's all over the place. USA Today, wow, didn't know about that. Where we first heard about Jeffrey Epstein here, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Judge rules Labor Secretary Acosta as federal prosecutor broke law in Jeffrey Epstein underage sex case. It wasn't underage, it was a giant sex trafficking and blackmail operation to a slave island. My Lord. So there it all is. You wanted to get into this. That was actually under my stack. Paul Manafort is a hardened and bold criminal, Mueller prosecutors tell, including Jeannie Ray, Hillary's top cover-up artist for Russiagate and Chinagate, at her foundation. So, I mean, I, I mean, I couldn't hold a straight face in that judge's courtroom. When Jeannie Ray is my prosecutor, it'd be like, I was a Jew in World War II, hypothetically, and the head judge is Hitler. Right. I'd be like, dude, you're Adolf Hitler. I mean, yeah. this is insane. So this is all starting to come out, uh, and it's crazy. And the media tries to spin it because there's some Trump connection. Because later this guy got into government. This is bipartisan. Clearly, they tried to set up a, uh, uh, high powered uh, you know, lawyers and other people that weren't involved. That's all Mueller stock and trade. So condensing this down, Robert Barnes, uh, you've you've really studied it. What's happening? So there's one name that all those stories are connected to. The Epstein case, the Manafort case, and the Roger Stone case. And interestingly enough, it's the one name that the judge in the Roger Stone case said that Roger Stone can never reference. Not only can he not reference it related to his case, he can never talk about one name, period, while his case is pending in court, which could be years. And what name is that? Robert Mueller. And what is Robert Mueller to do with the Epstein case? Guess who was FBI director when that deal was done? Guess who was identified in internal FBI documents? They're identified by a guy on Twitter called Technofog, a famous lawyer. Uh, that identify what? That the informant, an informant for Robert Mueller was Mr. Epstein. In other words, he was giving blackmail files, potentially, on a wide range of people to Robert Mueller. At the same time, the sweetheart deal that broke the rules was being filed on behalf of Epstein. And so while Epstein gets to sit in a sweetheart deal... Paul Manafort's supposed to go to prison for life. Paul Manafort's supposed to be the w most harshly punished individual in one of the most history of political prosecutions. So my, Paul Manafort, who's never been accused of anything connected to pedophilia, uh, is going to go to prison for life and rot until he dies. But Epstein, who is running a blackmail ring of underage prostitution, gets to walk. And the only man that they all have in common is Robert Mueller, and it's the one person that the judge said Roger Stone can never talk about, even unrelated to his case. So that's the common denominator between all three, is that the deep state fix-it man is still fixing things for the deep state. And, and again, this is bigger than Russiagate, all these things. It's a window into how Hoover operated, a window into how uh, you know, other big titans of control have operated, uh, whether we, we were talking about it last night and, and, and what happened with some of the Hollywood groups, this is done over and over and over again. 
And when you look at the judge's ruling on Stone, he obviously got maneuvered by his lawyers to say, this is the worst thing ever. We grovel your Supreme Majesty when you read what they said. Oh, we're so terrible. We're so bad. There was a shot of you on his website with a little uh, Celtic cross up in the corner, factoid with letters and words after it. And, and then they get, Stone's lawyer says, oh, this is unconscionable. It's indefensible. The judge says, you're damn right. You can't talk about anybody who's in the case, even in things separate from the case. Donald Trump, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Robert Mueller, anybody. And then Roger disappears into a literal black hole, whereas where they want him to get him to, I guess, bear false witness uh, against the president. This is just unprecedented. Absolutely. This is a prior restraint on free speech, which has been almost uniformly and universally decried by the court systems all the way. They are not what he, what she did is violate his First Amendment rights, but also violate his Fifth Amendment right to due process, his Sixth Amendment right to a fair trial, and his Eighth Amendment right against excessive bail. Because what she said is that his conditions of release would now require this gag order that if he violated, she would put him in prison. So you, how did his Rogers lawyer? So I'm not trying to be enemies with, but. How did they maneuver, your majesty, this is indefensible. She goes, you are correct. Silence forever. I mean, how on earth, when you got Jeannie Ray slithering around, Hillary so arrogant, her main cover-up lawyer and her foundations running the prosecution? Exactly. I mean, that's, of course they don't want Roger to be able to talk about that. Completely. These people are crazy. Let me give Mueller a little newsflash. It's already done. Everybody already knows everywhere. I don't know what you morons Listen to NPR, you know, believe your own BS. No one is smoking your dope anymore. Exactly. I mean, uh, sort of one of my universal rules of law is never bow to a abusive authority, period. Because whenever you do, abusive authority just sees that as weakness, and they whack you and hit you and hurt you further. You have to challenge it. You have to question it. You have to contest it. It's the only way justice or liberty is ever defended or ever done. And it's a natural tendency for a lot of lawyers to say, oh, please, if they think if they walk in on sackcloth and on their knees and beg the bad king to do the good thing, that all of a sudden the bad king is going to do the good thing. That never happens. It's only when you expose the bad king for doing things that violate the most protected liberties and rights we have in the, le in the legal process that you can get them to actually try to do at least part of the right thing. And that, I think, was a practical and tactical error here that backfired to where Roger is in a literal black hole where he has literally been told if he speaks in his own defense in a criminal case, even about... While the entire corporate media rains down lies... 24-7. Exactly. If he merely responds to a defamatory, libelous lie in the public about him that's negatively influencing his reputation forever outside of the contours of the case, if he says one word in his own defense, he goes to prison. By the way, it's worse than that. Before everybody else that was in the courtroom clammed up, they said, well, they were obsessed with you, and could you be silenced? Exactly. And so Reportedly, the judge is like, once anyone he ever knew, you can't do that. And then by that, six degrees of separation, the whole planet. And by his own words, there appears to be a coordinated conspiracy between Robert Mueller's team, people like Larry Klayman and others who are trying to create these fake surrogates that are... ...obviously. The so-called left, I don't call them liberals, they're the left-hand path, Jacobins, French Revolution, that's really their ethos in the last 200 years, 220 years, is the Jacobins. Any real historian will go, oh yeah. So if you're like a PhD level uh, big think tank, they all see the world as the Jacobins on the left versus the Renaissance on the right. And the Jacobins pose as if they were the Renaissance in an attempt to take it over. So America and our revolution was Renaissance-based. They always try to tie it to the French Revolution, which uh, Jefferson was tied to, but later he found out it was bad. And, of course, you've got your own historical background. You're, you're a smart guy on that front. But we have got the left terrorizing, attacking. Used to, like, every month I'd have a video of them beating up somebody in a Make America Great Again hat. I get them every day or a couple times a day, and I will play some of these clips, and then... They escalate from all the coastlines will be flooded by 2013, uh, Gore said 10 years earlier. Now it's there won't be a planet in 12 years. We're all dead. They're just escalating. And it seems like they're already hit peak level. And I think it's, tur I know it's turning people off. Do you A, agree with that? B, where does it go from here? Because I, I really think that their escalation, their attempt to make us submit, 
has actually only awakened people. I think it has. I mean, I think the the there are some people who are going to be scared and intimidated by it, just naturally, uh, and that's their original and initial goal is to be afraid to be publicly affiliated and associated with anything that challenges the establishment press perspective, including whether it's on Trump or whether it's Make America Great Again or it's cultural conservatism or Turning Point, whomever it is. So you know, I was out here in Texas and went into a restaurant where an old elderly guy is wearing his MAGA hat and realized when I walked by just how rare that had been of late. That if I had been in any major northeastern or west coast city, I don't see that anywhere ever where it was more popular and common around the time of the campaign. So it's having some deterrent effect on people being willing to voice their opinions. But ultimately, that will lead to a backlash on people who do not. Well, want it to makes it like a diamond under pressure, coal. Yes. It only internalizes it and makes it even more. And instinctively, people understand that when you try to suppress their opinions, that that means their opinions are more likely right than wrong. There's no re reason. Nobody's afraid of a dumb opinion. Well, what, we went to lunch today, and I had coming in Hispanic families at the table, Hispanic families, yep. really good-looking, nice families, just mm -hmm. loving. The truth is Hispanics love freedom. Absolutely. They're trying, I mean, that's why Trump, some of his best success, some of his biggest improvements was among Doubling people. Republican numbers for Hispanics. Exactly. Just like he did with African Americans. Because they see through it. They're like, what? Well, as soon as Van Jones was going nuts on CNN that night saying, oh, it's a white lash, da, da, da. And I was like, well, why don't you take a look at Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and, and Ohio and, to, and Michigan? And what were you going to find? The decisive vote was African-American precincts voting more for Trump than they did for Hillary, than they did for Obama, and consequently, that is why he won. The tipping margin in Wisconsin, the tipping margin. By the way, where did InfoWars, with Roger Stone's advice, we targeted Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan with everything we had. We ran, uh, well, he, we, we targeted those, those promos and Danny Williams to the black community. Absolutely. And we had some, we had uh, Facebook stuff that we ran that had 48 million views between the channels. Correct. And that's why Hillary and them made their proper analysis. Like, they want InfoWars sunk. Absolutely. So I'm not bragging, but if like I was like a fighter bomber, you know, where they have the stuff they've shot down on the side. InfoWars is just festooned with shoot downs. Completely. I remember telling people right after the election that there's going to be a whole war waged on InfoWars and other places like it. Because you were the most influential in creating the, the sort of mainstream press establishment that wanted to suppress Trump's message to overcoming that. And that was the first time they had seen it overcome in a presidential election. They're like, holy cow, InfoWars can tip the war and the political war for the most election for the most powerful office in the world. The only reason I raise that more and more is we didn't make a big deal at the time. It's almost embarrassing. I don't want to be arrogant. No. It, it, no, we were effective. Our audience was effective. Now we are under total attack. Exactly. My favorite rule, old Tennessee rule, which is an only only a stuck pig squeals. So when you see somebody being squealed about, chances are by the press and by the establishment and by the corrupt insiders in D.C., that means that person has been effective. That means that person is likely saying something truthful. You don't need to take the, somebody who's not Galileo to the stake. You need to take Galileo to the stake because Galileo is speaking such deep truth that it's a threat to the establishment and the system. So the, if you see someone being targeted, exceptionally targeted, that's really a message to pay special attention. To and I don't want to over-promote this, but it's because uh, it's, it's it's negative and it's painful and I'm not enjoying it. And the crew isn't either. They're, they're, they're the reason we're here. And the audience, the crew, it's all one family, all one body fighting. But I think they've way overdone it now where at the grassroots and everything and, and even the government, there's a lot of good people and other places. It's like we got a lot of the intellectuals and other people that go, what is InfoWars? Why is it under so much attack? So they may have cut some of our outreach down, but the quality, we always have got a great audience, but the quality now is major governments, militaries, intelligence agencies are like pin drop listening now. It's like, what the hell scared the system so much about this show? Exactly. And that's the natural reaction to people who are instinctive, to people who are intuitive, to people who are intelligent, to people who have skeptical perspective of the, of the world. They're going to look at this and say, if this person's being targeted and this network's being targeted, it must be saying or doing something that's so deeply true and so radically true that they need me, the audience, to not hear it. For them to be so scared that me, the audience, can make my own decisions with my own rational faculty, with my own moral judgment, they're scared of me making that judgment. And that's why they want to suppress and censor the speech of InfoWars and Alex Jones is they don't want me, the audience, to make my own judgment of my own views and choose my views accordingly. And it, it's an intimidation to the system, and they recognize the system feels a threat it hasn't felt in a very long time. Now, they're also very threatened by Turning Point USA that's reaching out to everybody, but very, very effective at, you know, unifying people around Americana ideas uh, with Candace Owens and others that are involved. We've got too many of these videos. They're on InfoWars.com, but here's one just a few days ago. And I'm surprised CNN even said this is wrong because they get... They push too far, you know, like Stelter's claiming now they never reported at CNN about the Smollett hoax. So they're really understanding, wow, we overdid it. 
uh, but a real politically motivated hate crime caught on camera, and they they just the guy just beats the hell out of a guy handing out Turning Point USA flyers at the college. Uh, so here's that video. Jesus Christ! What? What? And as long as he calls him racist, he can punch him over and over again in the face. And when they say the racist word, it's like a white guy beating up a white guy. And it's white guys almost always wanting to show off that whites are bad. F you white people. It's, it's total mental illness. Absolutely. They're all trying to seek social prestige points, that they're more morally just than others. I always point out whenever somebody makes that point to me, I'm always like, well, tell me about the civil rights cases you've supported. Tell me about the civil rights movements you've been a part of. You've been a part of civil rights cases. You've been a part of civil rights movements. These kids, they never have. All these big grandstanding lefties who want to make big uh, social media points about how they're for civil rights. Where are they on the front? Oh, I'm not bragging about myself, but you try going and protesting the Klan uh, 20 years ago in East Texas. The, the, some of those towns are bad. Those cops are against you, too, there. Not Absolutely. all cops are bad, but most cops are good. But there, you're like, the Klan's threatened to kill you, and you say, hey, cops, do something. They go, F you. We're <laughs> a part of the Invisible Empire. Oh, exactly. I had a cop in Mississippi tell me if I ever came back to town, it would be the last time anybody saw me. So that's, uh, I'll respect people who actually do something substantive and something concrete. But it's like a lot of people who, who virtue signal for refugees or virtue signal. I've done pro bono work for actual refugees. Don't virtue signal for fake refugees when you're not, not even willing to take them into your own house. If you really care about them, fine, sponsor them. Put them up at home. Well, They're not willing to do that. England won't take in the famous Pakistani woman who was on death penalty got out they're trying to kill her and then she's a christian they go oh you're a christian it'll upset muslims if we take you in exactly and instead they're willing to let isis brides come back home so the the insanity of this sort of combination all because of virtue signaling people who don't do anything for civil rights on the front line and so their reflection of their harassment is really because they don't really believe in civil rights they don't believe in civil li civil liberties they don't care about constituencies that they claim to care about they only care about them being morally superior to everyone else and having more power than everybody else and that's why they're so threatened by those well, it's like aoc people. said she said i have the power you don't shut up exactly uh, and uh, that I don't like to talk about something till the fish is in the boat, uh, you know, gaffed and in the ice chest, and then it's Miller time. Uh, so that's what's going to happen, and I'm going to leave it at that and just stop right there. And we've got a bunch of irons in the fire, but a lot of calls this week. Love to take your calls. No calls today. We covered this last night in a special report, but I want to get into it again because I didn't elaborate enough on what I was going to say. Yes, you watch the Bill Maher piece from his show on HBO Friday night, and it sounds like he's loving flyover country in the South, or geographically, you know, 92, 93% of the country. In fact, that map they show isn't even accurate. It's, it's more red than that. But what he's saying is, oh, you, the South and the Midwest wants to be the East and wants to be California, I want to be clear, California is a gorgeous state. A lot of amazing people used to be more swashbuckling than Texas in many respects. It's been colonized by leftists, people going there from all over the country to be movie stars. I mean, it's like the narcissist of the planet went there and ruined it. So I, I, there's a lot of good in California. There's a lot of good in, in Oregon. There's a lot, I mean, you go outside Portland, it's wonderful people. Same thing with Washington State, but... I don't sit there and, and hate the people and say I'm better than them just in general. But there is an attitude living here in Austin. It's been colonized by kind of the locusts that went to California and ate it dry and to the bone. And now they've come here that we're these losers. We're these idiots. We, you know, we're just riding horses to work every day. And we, didn't, we haven't discovered toilet paper yet. And... Mar just plays into that during the whole piece. Like, oh, Bezos... He should have, you know, done somewhere in the Midwest or he should have, you know, come there because they want to be us. Bezos mainly uses foreigner labor in people. And of all the tech guys, he, he's not even one of the worst. He at least doesn't own slave factories in China like Apple. Or he isn't helping the Chinese government censor people. I'm not defending Bezos either, but it's kind of true. Like, why are you on Bezos? He's nothing compared to this. But AOC runs him and his deal out of uh, New York City. And I think... Blind hogs do find acorns. Broken clocks are right twice a day. She's right that 
why should the whole thing be written off? Why should ultra rich guys that lecture us about being liberal all day not pay any tax? That's actually a point she's making. So I'm agreeing with AOC here, but you don't run it off. But what she should be talking about is how he's exploiting all this illegal alien and immigrant labor. But 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 I want to go to this piece. It's just that it's the condescension. Everyone's fleeing California in the Northeast. The statistics show it. You say you have all the money. Well, yeah, the billionaires live there, but if you cut them out of the equation, it's one of the poorest areas, highest areas of welfare, feces everywhere, needles everywhere, highest crime. I mean, the truth is blue areas suck. So, yeah, we may not have the highest property values in other areas of the country, but we sure as hell, you know, uh, don't have our kids learning how to get blowjobs when they're five, or we still fly all glory down at the courthouse. Well, exactly. In fact, when you look at it, you look at, like, for example, for Trump country, you can drive from the southern tip of Florida to the northern part of Maine, from the coastal part of Virginia to coastal California, from the northern woods of Wisconsin to the Texas-Mexico border, and without hitting any Hillary County. By contrast, if you want to travel for, for Hillary, you got to go by plane. Why is that? Why, if it's rural, whether it's Maine or whether it's North Texas, they're good, hard people. They know what's going on. Exactly. I remember last during the uh, Demo during the election 2016, as part of a bet that I was going to make, I traveled through all of eastern o uh, Ohio and western Pennsylvania, and it went, and it went through all these small towns and the parts that were the most Americana, the parts celebrating community, the parts celebrating family, the parts celebrating tradition, the parts celebrating work, the parts uh, celebrating everything we celebrate about what. It means to be they American. can't get further away from hollywood absolutely and they think we want to be that their definition of hollywood is going out still in their car and have a little picnic in front of the big outdoor movie theater i mean it's old school americana it's a belief that when you see a film event you do it with your family with your friends and with your neighbors all sharing together so it's the most it's the best definition of americana it's not individualism of an extreme kind it's individualism it celebrates the individual protects the individual rights but in the context of family and community of values of church so why is Hollywood so threatened? And, 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 and I interrupted you about the most patriotic places, but let me get into that. Absolutely. I think it's because as, as a core level, I think part of it is, is uh, a desire to be those people. I think a lot of these people in Hollywood down deep would much rather be honest middle Americana than they would uh, to be arrogant. Oh, Hollywood almost folks. all the real Hollywood people have moved to the most rural areas. They love it. Exactly. Whether yeah, it's Paul, Dave Chappelle or anybody. Paul Newman, uh, Gene Hackman. I mean, these are people, I always said that the best Hollywood actors are people that are way, way out of Hollywood. I mean, uh, Snipes. Robert Duvall. Absolutely. Robert Wesley Duvall. Snipes. Exactly. They Everybody. They away from it because they recognize the cor the culture. Rick Linkletter is my well. friend. He's been, never, he hates Hollywood. He's been 30 right. years out in the woods outside Austin. Precisely. Whereas the more corrupt ones, the ones that have been corrupted, you take someone like Michael Moore when he's in middle America, Michigan, he's doing one kind of film. Then he goes to New York and he's doing a totally different kind of film. When he's in Michigan, he's He sold about, out his roots. Absolutely. When he's in Flint, he's talking about workers. When He's in New York. He's talking about evil, terrible, scary guns. So it's a it's a different mindset and mentality that's part of a culture that corrodes moral value, that corrodes community. That it's like sort of Weimar Germany, Berlin, 1920s. Anything goes. It's a and thing. out of that comes a Hitler. Exactly. It always does. Why out of the putrid leftist swamp? always some super fascist evil comes. Precisely. I think it's twofold. One, they create a sort of chaotic moral environment that terrifies a lot of people that the, the fascist types are able to parlay. Off. But secondly, they get the benefit of the... Once you corrode values to where there are no values, it's easy for a Hitler to step forward. It is those core values that stops the Hitlers of the world from arising. It's those core values of family, Americana, of tradition, of community. And the globalist corporatists, they just want people to submit to their corporate system. They don't get their getting rid of the immune system it's going to stop stuff way more evil than they are. Exactly. They, they are short-sighted, and they're looking at it so just like someone who only values the next stock report. The corporations are looking at a short-sighted system, a Chinese-based model that undermines moral values that is ultimately the safety net for American freedom and liberty are those moral values in middle America, the same ones Bill Maher mocked because down deep he knows it's what stops his idolatry and ideology from becoming the dominant ideology and ideology. Well, his claim that we want to be them, yeah, maybe young, dumb, uh, girls that didn't get enough daddy time. I mean, yeah, real idiots like bugs to a bug zapper go out to L.A. But almost everyone I know, famous actors, you name it, you know a lot of them, mm -hmm. they hate it. They can't get further away from it. Absolutely. That's why they all want to produce stuff in New Zealand or Toronto or exactly. Louisiana. They do not want to be around it. And those kids from middle America that show up in Hollywood and Vine, in two years they're trying to get the hell out of Hollywood. They're trying to figure out ways to get a bus trip back home. They're trying to get back to real values, to real tradition, to real community, things that really mattered. Because everybody tells you what you want to hear, but they don't. They can. They deliver on nothing. Absolutely. It's vacant. It's it, 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 down deep. It's, it's empty. Important. 
empty space, one big massive empty space. So what if you dug in and we could do an X-ray of Bill Maher's soul? What it would be is just empty, just blank. It, there would be nothing there. There wouldn't be anything evil. There wouldn't be anything good. It's just one big empty vacant space. And down deep he knows that. So down deep he wants to be like those middle America people who have a deep soul, who have a deep value system, who ha who represent the best of America and the best America ever has, ever is, and ever will be. And that's the difference between middle America and Hollywood America. Because the soul is, is envious of those that have a soul. Absolutely. Though down deep, they look at the life that I couldn't. When I was going through, I wanted to move to rural western Pennsylvania. It's like these are great ways of life. It reminded me of southeast Tennessee. Great communities, great cultures, connected, caring about each other. The guy in the mobile home and the guy in the fancy home are just two blocks apart. So they can't ignore one another. They can't evade one another. They have to care about and respect one another. It's like the South and blacks and whites are all living right with each other. Exactly. And that's why you get the so the highest interracial marriage rate is amongst poor and working class Southerners historically. It's not amongst privileged class folks up in upstate New York. Oh, the white, man, I'm not putting down white people. I'm just saying the white widest areas in statistics, Paul Wasson reports, are white people who are liberal. Absolutely. They are the most racist. Well, they did a recent survey where they asked, and I'd seen this all the time growing up, I, the, and saw it particularly when I got to Yale and law school. The, they did a survey, and they looked at how liberals talk to African Americans versus conservatives. And what they found is that liberals... Well, no, that, that was even the Washington Post had meant that last year. They okay. talk down to them like they're idiots. Totally condescending. Because down deep, they see them as less than human. It's, it's like reading Thomas Wolfe from the late 1960s, Electric Kool-Aid Test, those kind of books, where you about Lenny Bernstein trying to do a, a fundraiser for the Black Panthers in Upper West Side Manhattan, and how the solution to all of the Upper West Side liberals uh, to having black servants was, oh yeah, we'll have white servants instead. Not recognizing maybe the problem is their whole servant culture that they've adapted in the first place. Well, no, it's like you said about all these famous people go, well, if we don't have Mexicans, no one will clean our toilets. They don't know there's Mexican directors, scientists, everything else. Like the idea that the person cleaning my toilet is a Mexican.